Hi, uh, this is a shout out from Ed Single D uh, for all the millions of fans on uh, Tom Baker's new YouTube channel uh, called Upside Down Shark. All right, so uh, get jiggy with it, people, and uh, watch the show, watch it, and, uh, and and like it lots of the time. Okay, all right, okay, bye. Like most of us born in the mid 90s, I was lucky enough to enjoy the golden age of Cartoon Network. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. The likes of Courage the Cowardly Dog, Dexter's Laboratory, and the Powerpuff Girls. Ah! Oh, they made weekend mornings and after school evenings rich with colourful worlds, irreverent characters, and zany plots. To this day, if I'm looking for something to pick me up or give me a healthy dose of nostalgia, I'll whack on an episode or two and take a trip back to childhood. But of this prestigious bunch, none of them stack up to the absolute genius of Ed, Ed and Eddie. The hijinks of three 11 year old friends trying to scam their neighbours out of enough money to buy jawbreakers are some of the funniest 20 minutes to be found anywhere on TV, let alone just the kids channels. But if you've clicked on this video, chances are you don't need me to tell you that. But what are less well known are the various video game adaptations featuring the residents of the cul-de-sac. Around this time, cartoon studios couldn't help but milk their Technicolor cash cows, slapping them on a video game cartridge or disc to varying degrees of success. Yet yeah, whether they be good, bad, or somewhere in between, each is still a fascinating time capsule that's definitely worth talking about. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. In this video, I'll be taking a look at each of the Ed, Ed and Eddie titles that received a full console release, as well as games in which the Ed boys have a supporting role. I'll tell you a little bit about each one, whether they're any good, and if you should check them out today. What I won't be doing is talking about all the web games you could play on the Cartoon Network site. One, because they're pretty much all defunct by this point, and also, there's like 30 of them, and finding enough information about the console games was hard enough. So instead, here's a tasteful in memoriam. And now we've got that out of the way, let's begin. So the first game to feature the Eds in any sort of capacity was Cartoon Network Speedway, released all the way back on November 17th, 2003 for the Game Boy Advance. And boy, is it a kart racer for the GBA. You can expect all the Grand Prix, zany weapons, and other tropes of the genre, as well as some pretty surprising innovations. Speedway actually introduced a blue shell mechanic before Mario Kart. So take that, Chris Pratt. And to its credit, Speedway also handles and plays really well, and although I wouldn't say it offers much in the way of a challenge, I still enjoyed zipping around the various courses. But when it specifically comes to our favourite show, you can pick either the Eds in a shared vehicle, or somewhat randomly, Johnny 2x4 as an unlockable racer. But it's a good job that they tell you who you've picked beforehand, because even for a GBA game of the time, everything looks like ass. It just looks so muddy and pixelated, and given that Mario Kart Super Circuit came out two years before, it's just inexcusable. And listen, I'm all for Johnny getting his moment in the sun, but when Dexter's Laboratory and the Powerpuff Girls have no representation at all, even I have to call hot bollocks. It just feels like a huge oversight, and I'm not sure if it was because it was rushed or just not enough care was put into it, but it cheapens the package as a whole. That's probably why it's sitting with an average score of 53% on game rankings. And despite it being the first stop on our edorific journey, it's not a game I recommend seeking out today. The next game our boys took a supporting role in was Cartoon Network Block Party, released on August 5th, 2004. If Speedway was Cartoon Network's answer to Mario Kart, then Block Party, funnily enough, was its answer to Mario Party. You guide your character across a game board, competing in mini-games against your opponents to rack up the highest score before the game ends. You can pick between Quick Play, which whips you around one board, Tournament, in which you'll have to tackle all four, or dive into an individual mini-game. And I'd say you can't really go wrong with any choice, but then I'd be lying because they're all bad. Really, really bad. Although there's a pretty respectable amount of minigames on paper, in reality, most of them are just clones of each other with a different coat of paint. 
I think there was only about five actually unique games on offer, and most of them are really nothing more than hitting button prompts at the right time. To make matters worse, party games like this, they need to be played multiplayer. I'm pretty sure there's a register for people who actively choose to play Mario Party by themselves but the limitations of the GBA mean you're flying solo most of the time. And whether your opponents are better or worse than you comes down to the off-screen decisions of an AI. It just leaves everything feeling pretty unfulfilling, unsatisfying, and painfully dull. But where did the Eds play into this mess? Well, although all three plus the Kanker sisters are featured, you can only play as Eddie. Like Speedway, Block Party suffers from a severely limited roster, given the back catalogue they could have picked from, and this is one of many cases of this. In the Ed, Ed and Eddie stage, Eddie wants to win a skateboarding competition, but Double D doubts that he has a chance. You're then tasked with collecting three trophies and $50 before returning to the star and hopefully winning. Although it is kind of funny to see Eddie on a skateboard, like the other mini games, you only really need to hit the button prompts at the right time to perform the tricks, and there's really no incentive to play it more than once. With an average Metacritic score of 52, this is another entry I'd steer well clear of. Oh jeez, this has been a pretty disappointing start to the rundown. I think it's just about time for the Eds to take centre stage and hopefully save the day. Ed, Ed and Eddie Jawbreakers released back on March 25th, 2003, and has the unique distinction of being the first game to bear the Ed Boy's name in the title. The premise is pretty classic. The Eds enter a competition to win not just Jawbreakers, but Jawbreakers that never lose their flavour, and boy does that sound good. I've been dipping my old ones in MSG just to keep them going. You'll have to earn money, solve physical puzzles, and interact with your chums from the cul-de-sac to win the day. It's all pretty much framed as a 2D platformer, where you control one of the Eds at a time, each of which has a unique ability to help you progress. Big Ed can headbutt things and push carts, Double D can use a slingshot, a wrench, and use switches that do different things, and Eddie can use a hypnotizing wheel or a jetpack. He can also double jump, meaning he can reach places that the others can't, take shortcuts, and grab out of reach items. The 24 levels will take you through classic show settings, including the cul-de-sac, the junkyard, and the Kanker's trailer park, which serves as the backdrop for the game's final battle. Now this game got a slating back in the day, scraping a 49% on Metacritic, but honestly, I think that's really unfair. I'll admit that the controls are pretty clunky, and it might have been nice to get a few more tutorials, but this is the first time that the spirit of the show has really been captured in a video game. I mean, the art style is pretty spot on, even mimicking the wavy outlines of the character models, and that's not to mention the writing, which is also razor sharp. Each time you interact with a character, it feels like it could have been taken from a lost script from the show. There's even a brilliant fourth wall breaking gag at the end, when the Ed's inevitably fail to win the Jawbreakers. It's definitely a game for the fans before anyone else, but I really enjoyed it and I actually think it's aged pretty well. Next up we have 2005's Ed Ed and Eddie The Misadventures, to date the only game to feature our boys on a fully fledged home console, appearing on basically everything. You effectively play through six scams, from sneaking into Jimmy's party uninvited, to finding pieces of a map to a secret stash of jawbreakers. There's also these two bonus missions where we tear through the fabric of reality harder than our friend Rolf. We've got Edzilla, where Ed literally becomes a kaiju facing off against the Kankinator. And we've also got Rebel Robot Ranch, in which the Eds need to escape an alien planet infested with mechanized horrors. Crazy. As for the actual gameplay, it's the classic 3D action platformer affair that was popular at the time, but that doesn't make it any less fun. Each Ed has their own abilities and strengths to exploit, and the levels are as varied as the tasks you'll undertake. It might not be perfect, I mean you can pace through most of it in less than a few hours, but for real, this is where Ed, Ed and Eddie games peaked. Everything about it, to me, is just done right. We get an excellent hub world to explore based on the cul-de-sac, brilliant voice acting coupled with brand new 2D animations made exclusively for the game's cutscenes, and levels that could easily be lost episodes from the show. 
When we live in an age where mid noughties licensed games like Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom are getting full remakes, I hope there's at least one low level executive out there pushing for a redux of Ed, Ed and Eddie The Misadventures. Oh, and before I forget, the GBA game is pretty unique for obvious hardware limitation reasons, but broadly speaking shares the same structure and spirit of the full fat version, just in 2D. I haven't played this one as much as the home console game because frankly, it's not as good. But if you have any memories of this version, do let me know in the comments below. And finally we have 2007's Ed Ed and Eddie Scam of the Century, today the last game to feature the Eds. Released exclusively on the Nintendo DS, it kind of fell back into the formula of the first game, a 2D sprite based platformer with each of the Eds playable and with unique abilities. The plot revolves around Eddie losing his Who to Scam and Wen book, and the boys having to defeat the kids of the cul-de-sac before ultimately facing off against their big chinned ringleader. Kevin. This is the game I played most as a kid, and on reflection, it really is a more polished version of Jawbreakers. The controls and graphics are better, there's finally some much needed tutorials, and although it doesn't do anything revolutionary, it's a fun, breezy game that never outstays its welcome. The writing is top notch as ever, with plenty of fourth wall breaking jokes, and we're also treated to a debut from Johnny's alter ego, Captain Melonhead. But while I really enjoyed the main game, what's maybe most noteworthy are the three mini games, which do a much better job of taking advantage of the DS's touch controls. Firstly, and perhaps my favourite, is Wackazit. As the name suggests, it's effectively Whack-A-Mole, only with Ed's acne riddled back filling the screen. Delicious. Next you've got Yeshmi X Bounty of Meat, a match 3 game based on our friend Rolf's meat worshipping religion. I didn't even realise Rolf's religion revolved around meat. And to think, I thought spending a week's worth of weekends on ed.fandom.com would be a waste of time. Who's laughing now? Lastly we have Here's Pie in Your Eye, a carnival themed shooting gallery in which you have to hit Rolf, Sarah and Kevin with delicious cream pies. Each offers a simple, high score based experience, but it's that simplicity that makes them infinitely replayable and infuriatingly addictive. And that my friends, is that. Every single console game featuring Ed, Ed and Eddie reviewed in 2022. To the cynically inclined, you might see them as merely licensed cash-ins of a beloved Cartoon Network show. But to me, and many others, there's so much more. These games kept us entertained after school, on long car journeys, or any time we wanted to explore what went on in that colourful world beyond what we saw on our TV screens. They may not be perfect, but to me, they're still really special, and it'd be a shame for them to be forgotten. But did you ever watch Ed, Ed and Eddie, and have you played any of the games? Please let me know in the comments below, I'd love to read your thoughts and memories. And also let me know if you'd like to see more deep dives into licensed games like this. It was a lot of fun to make, and I'm a sucker for nostalgia, so hit me up with the suggestions. But anyway, until then, my name is Tom, this has been UDS, and we'll see you next time.